How's it going everybody? It's Pilot Flame and we are back with another FPL video and today we're going to be taking a look at the best captaincy choices for Game Week 3. It was a bit rough for the captaincy in Game Week 2 with both Bruno Fernandes and Mohamed Salah being the two main standouts, both blanking in their respective fixtures. And this week they might be much less captain than normal. Salah has Chelsea at home, which is going to be a difficult fixture because Chelsea look to potentially be challenging for the title this season and are the current European champion as well as Bruno Fernandes has a tougher fixture away at Wolves which historically for United over the past few seasons although that was under Nuno Espirito Santo I found it very difficult to play at Molyneux and it always tends to be a low scoring game and often a game that United doesn't tend to be favored in as much as what they would be in other away fixtures where they often do quite well. If you haven't done so already, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and turn those notification bells on so that you can get the content as soon as it is readily available. Make sure to drop us a follow over on Twitter so you can keep up to date with all and any FPL news like price changes, transfer news, and all that sort of good stuff. As well as give us a follow over on Twitch so that you can see when we go live for our FPL live streams. We posted the VOD over on uh, YouTube, so here on YouTube, uh, from our Twitch stream, and that was at 7 p.m. EST on Monday. And we're also doing a deadline stream, which will be one hour before the FPL deadline. So make sure to come check us out for that. There'll be a pinned comment down below to let you know the exact time, as well as with the link to the channel. So without further ado, let's talk about our partners for this video with Fantasy Football Scout. We have partnered up with Fantasy Football Scout for this coming Fantasy Premier League season, and they're giving you an exclusive offer. Use the link down in the description to get 20% off your Fantasy Football Scout membership. It gives you access to the exclusive members area, which has new tools such as the three-player comparison tool, as well as some old favorites such as the Rate My Team tool, the Season Ticker, and my personal favorite, the fully customizable stats tables, which you can share among other Fantasy Football Scout members powered by OptiStats. Use the link down in the description below to get 20% off your membership today. Sign up now. Now, in my opinion, the best fixture on paper that I had earmarked in my captaincy matrix was Spurs at home to Watford. Watford was a team in the championship last season that did exceptionally well at home and not as well away from home. And Spurs have got two uh, games, two wins under their new manager and Nuno Espirito Santo. And they've had some key players in there like Deli Ali, like Hyunmin Son. They haven't scored very many goals and their XGI would suggest that they're not necessarily lighting the world on fire but I think that their opposition could be quite weak and they could be opened up to some severe attacks especially if the man down the very bottom is at his very best came came on as a bench appearance he came on as a sub uh, because of a speculation that he still might be going to the likes of Man City but if he has his head straightened on and he is the man that we know he can be when playing up front for Spurs he can do some serious damage and that only helps out the likes of Son and Ali to get more involved uh, take pressure off them and make them more available for chances to score. Now, one interesting thing that we saw was that Deli Ali, although he did get taken down for the penalty, maybe it was just something that he wanted to do because he got taken down for it. He wanted to take the penalty himself. I'm still leaving open judgment on that. But we know that if uh, Kane is uh, you know, on the pitch, he will be on penalties uh, as well. Yeah, just the one shot, which was actually a big chance, Kane, uh, in his sub appearance. So definitely not fully fully fit from what we can tell in the little appearance that he had he wasn't you know dropping deep and spraying past all over the place like uh, Kane was early on last season but I think Son could definitely benefit from him being back in the team uh, that would take Son to a much wider position but it also makes it so that if Spurs were to play on the counter at any point Son would be the last man uh, and the closest one to the opposition's goal uh, and Kane would be more of the provider at least that's how they played uh, for the majority of last season take a look at Watford stats so obviously there's only been two matches this season uh so the stats are going to be the same uh 12 shots conceded in the box so not great considering uh that Watford won one of those games of uh, four big chances conceded uh where they they conceded four goals basically so when they concede big chances 
they can see goals. It's just a matter of can Spurs conjure up that much. They would have expected to have conceded on 2.56 goals. They conceded four uh, in those games. So Watford's defense is definitely penetrable. Um, it's just a matter of can Spurs be creative enough uh, to cause Watford problems. And I think they can. I think I had Son earmarked for this fixture as a game week three captain because I was thinking that Kane was probably going to go uh, to the likes of Manchester City or not necessarily be fully fit to play. Uh, I'm still considering Son to be brought into my FPL team and giving him the armband. It's just a matter of whether this little injury that Nuno mentioned after the game and was kind of surprised about is actually true. So we'll have to wait and see on that, which is why I'm being patient uh, about my transfers uh, this week. So we'll have to keep that one monitored. Now, with that being said, the only other fixture that I can see that could also be good for one of the bigger teams is uh, a little bit further down the road at Manchester, and it's going to be the red side of Manchester for this game week. Now, coming off a poor result for Man United away to Southampton, you would think that they should beat them with the quality that they even had on the pitch. But I think that the lineup was initially wrong for that game, as well as the substitutions that were made caused a bit of issues. When Sancho was brought on, Greenwood and Sancho often found each other within basically 10 yards of the same space. And then they brought on Jesse Lingard towards the end, which didn't really make too much sense considering Southampton were just sitting back and Jesse Lingard needs space like we saw when he played for West Ham uh, and Scott McTominay who apparently was still injured sort of from the previous game versus Leeds comes off the bench for 30 minutes because Solskjaer apparently needed him even though they have Donny van der Beek on the bench ready to go and he looked great in preseason so not really sure what's going on there but if it's another way performance uh, like that uh, Wolves are definitely going to give United problems however there are some bright points to it and that is the FPL assets like Greenwood, Pogba and Fernandez are all doing exceptionally well uh, Pogba still managed to get an assist as well as Mason Greenwood getting a goal uh, in game week two and they are up against a Wolves team that are somewhat stingy at the back. They do concede a similar amount of shots in the box um, to the likes of Watford, which is on the it's on the lower end of the spectrum uh, with 13. But they've only conceded two big chances, and they've only supposedly were going to concede 1.93 goals, which is pretty much exactly how much they conceded. They conceded one to Leicester, one to Spurs. One of them was obviously a penalty, uh, and the other one was a great finish by Jamie Vardy. So Wolves seem to have their defense somewhat nailed down. They just need to score up the other end. Now being at home, maybe that gives them, you know, they might be more incentivized to uh, attack, and that could potentially play into United's hands. I just think that the lineup needs to be right from Man United if they want to devastate Wolves, because Wolves are not the most clinical team. We've seen Triari have some pretty easy one-on-ones and mess them up. Raul Jimenez still isn't fully firing as of yet and will probably take time to get used to uh, be basically playing in a match because he hadn't played for, what was it, eight months or whatever it was from his head injury. But United could carve them open on the break. Fernandez, three goals on the season, uh, obviously all in the first game uh, of the season versus Leeds. Four shots in the box. Pogba, actually, surprisingly, I, when I saw this, five shots inside the box. So he is getting attempts on goal. He's got five assists, which is insane. Obviously, getting four in the Leeds game uh, initially where they did uh, a lot of their damage uh, for FPL points. Uh, and Greenwood, ticking along nicely, already risen up to seven points. 6 million it could be on his way up to 7.7 million by the end of the week getting one goal in each game four shots inside the box and you can see just how clinical mason greenwood is 0.57 xgi no problem for mason if he gets a shot and it's a clear opportunity he's most likely going to score because he's got that type of pinpoint accuracy and it was emphasized in his goal uh, versus uh, Leeds as well, when he just basically broke into the box, ran pretty much the full length of the pitch to do it, uh, and took a shot, and it was basically just clipped in and off the inside of the post. That type of accuracy you cannot buy. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see how this game pans out. Me personally, as a United fan, I don't see this being a very high-scoring game for United, whether they win or not. Uh, but I think it's probably the only real like kind of other premium that you can say is or will have a very, very good fixture on paper with Fernandez and then so on. And if Kane was was fit, then you would say, OK, well, Kane's kind of a shoe in. But we don't know what his fitness is going to be like. Could his head already be on the other side of Manchester, the blue side of Manchester already? So we'll have to see how that pans out. 
But let's take a look at some of the more differential captaincy picks that you would normally see on these uh, first two graphics and ones that I'm actually quite excited about. Now, the two teams that we picked out here for the differential captaincy choices have been West Ham and Manchester City. Now, City came off a 5-0 drumming of Norwich, and that was pretty much expected. However, when I deep dove into the first two games of Arsenal's performances versus Brentford away and versus Chelsea at home, they're one of the worst defenses in the league at the moment, and that may be due to the fact that they just don't know how to handle set piece as well i'm not too sure but 22 shots conceded inside the box i believe that was third uh in the league for the first two matches seven big chances conceded which is absolutely massive and an xg conceded a 4.34 goals expected so they should have potentially conceded maybe a third extra goal more than what they have already conceded with the two 2-0 losses that they've suffered thus far and Man City could do some demolition in that game now the one player that I think is probably going to be earmarked for a start in that one is Riyad Mahrez I believe it was um, uh, FF Scout uh, Luke or uh, Luke Disable I think is his, uh, what he uh, tends to go by but you'll see him on the Scoutcaster you'll see him on videos uh, uh, with Joe or John T over on FF Scout uh, from time to time. And he was saying, you didn't get Riyad Mahrez in for his benching uh, versus uh, versus Norwich uh, for a reason or, or something along those lines. Basically, he predicted that Mahrez would get benched versus Norwich. Uh, and then even as as well, FF Scout as uh, who does FPL Black Box as well. He also said that, yeah, everyone's going to sell Mars after he's bench versus Norwich, and then he's going to score a brace versus Arsenal. So I wouldn't put it past Mars to get a, a goal, maybe an assist, or maybe a couple of goals uh, versus Arsenal, who have been very susceptible at the back. And a team that's been absolutely on fire, that is a fantastic fixture this week, is West Ham. They have done some serious damage in the opening two fixtures they've gotten eight goals uh three of which have come from antonio two of which have come from ben rama they both have a couple of assists each and they've already risen in price twice the both of them antonio was originally 7.5 ben rama 6 million i've had them both from the beginning of the season because i saw them when they played versus atalanta in the preseason i was just like ben rama 6 million he, he's a he's a shoe-in he's definitely a shoe-in their fixtures off the start are very good and now they have a game versus Crystal Palace who they've only conceded one big chance, but one of those games was against Brentford. The other game was against Chelsea, so Chelsea did have some good finishing in that game. But I think that it could be a situation where Crystal Palace, you know, they have a new kind of back line with Anderson back there. Um, it's just one of those ones where maybe West Ham, you know, with a little bit of experience of like Dawson and Ogbonna come in there and they just ruin them on set pieces. And Antonio is also a set piece threat as well. And even if the ball drops to the edge of the box, the likes of Ben Rama and Fornells and Bowen will be there to pick up the pieces as well. So they could have some issues, Crystal Palace. But I think West Ham could be a good shout. Antonio for the arm men this week looks very promising as well. Me personally, I think I'm going to keep it on Son if I were to bring him in and if he is fit for the game because I think the next two fixtures for him are just way better uh, than Salas who plays Chelsea and Leeds in his next two fixtures whereas Son plays Watford and Crystal Palace. So I think that could be... Um, the decision I have to make there. But Antonio Captain looks very good this week. If you have a City asset and you know for sure that they're going to start. Again, they are also the early kickoff this week. So maybe some early team news. Who knows? If you were able to get that and ensure that they were going to start. Then maybe uh, an armband on one of them could do well as well. So that's going to do it for the captaincy picks this week. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And who are you going to be captaining in game week three? I'm very interested to see because there's a wide variety of picks this week. The mainstays don't necessarily have the greatest fixtures. And there could be some differential ones that could lead to some massive scores. If you get the captaincy right this game week. And that's going to do it for our Game Week 3 captaincy picks. If you haven't done so already, 
make sure to hit that like button subscribe to the channel if you are new or haven't done so already it greatly helps out the channel and turn those notification bells on so that you can get the content as soon as it is readily available also drop us a follow over on twitter if you want to keep up to date with any posts or fpl news whether it be transfer news price rises and anything in between as well as give us a follow over on twitch so that you can join us for our fpl live streams there'll be a pinned comment down below to let you know when our next stream is it will be the fpl deadline stream and we'll be doing preview streams uh you know usually on the mondays before uh the game week uh, kind of is sort of underway as well as the deadline streams if it's on a friday i'll have to do it the night before just because of the way my schedule works out and if it's a saturday then i get to do it right before the deadline actually happens one hour typically before the fpl deadline so make sure to check the pinned comment down below and lastly take advantage of the fantasy football scout offer that they have I believe the 20% off has dissipated for the monthly subscription, but that shouldn't stop you if you are late to the party because it's only, I believe, £20 for the whole season. So make sure to go check that out. Use the link down in the description below to get your Fantasy Football Scout membership. It gives you access to the members area, which will give you all the tools that you need to help elevate your FPL game. Thank you all for watching, and until the next one, take care.